Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Meat Made, and today I am going to show you how you can take your 3D models and edit them in a certain way and print them without supports. So the model I'm doing today is actually meant for resin 3D printing, but today we are going to be doing it on my Ender 3 Pro. And I'm also going to turn this model into a bust because it's just cool. Wait till you see it. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. So I have this new model that I got from Sanix from supporting his Patreon. And I'll go ahead and put a link to his Patreon in the description. But I'll also give you a link to his website where you could just purchase this model yourself. So today I'm going to show you how you can take any awesome model like this and turn it into a bust. Or you can slice it in a certain configuration to be able to print this without supports. So you can get the highest quality you can. Now there are some disadvantages to this method, and we'll go over those as well. But for the most part, it does turn out really well. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get this special software called Slicer. And the E is actually a number 3. And this is a free software that you can download, and the best thing about this is it will cut up your models in any form or fashion. So you just click the download button and install it. It is for Mac and Windows and even Linux. So once you have that all installed, the first thing you want to do is not open the program. You want to actually jump over to Cura because there's a few things that we've got to do with our model before we bring it into Slicer because Slicer's a free program and it does have its disadvantages. Orienting your model is honestly a big pain in Slicer. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually rotate this around how we want it in Cura and then export it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rotate this because I have the body right here and then I also have the head right here. You can see it right there. There's a lot of awesome detail and you can imagine just printing the mouth alone with the supports would be a nightmare. But we're going to print this all support free. So I'm going to click on rotate and then I'm going to click on this last icon right here. Select face to align to the build plate. So I just click it. And now I'm going to click the bottom of this, and there we go. So once you click on that face, it automatically turns it to be flat on the build surface. Now, that is all we really want to do for this specific thing. The one thing I will say, if you're going to rotate it and you want to turn this into a bust like we are today, you can always bring this below the line and turn it around however you're wanting to do it. So if you want to have it more of an angle or something like that, you can. But for my purposes today, I just want it just like that, and we're going to slice it in Slicer. Now the next thing is this model right here. I am going to rotate this one in the flattest position I can because I am going to print this face up. So I'm going to look at this and look at the mouth. And this is the part where I'm really going to look at the red here in my overhangs. So I don't see any overhang issues with the teeth in this position. So that is the position I'm going to have him in. But then I'm also going to look to make sure he's turned properly and kind of turn him that way. And then you can see everything is looking pretty good with this. I don't care that this point is touching and this one's not but I'm just making sure about the face. So now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go up to File, Export Selection. And this is going to export out just the head, whatever I have selected. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to click on this model. It'll have the light blue line around it when you know you have it selected. And I'm going to go to File, Export Selection again. And the other thing I did not mention is you want this to be an STL. So I'm going to just click STL and I'm going to save it in my location. All right, so the first thing is, is I'm going to open up Slicer. And then you notice the interface here. To move around, all you do is click in any of the area right here and drag and you can spin it around. And then to add a model, which is what we're going to do right now, is we're going to go to this top left corner and hit the word add. Then it's going to pop up with this dialog box for you, and you just need to select the files that you have sliced up. And then once you have your file, you just 
hit enter and it will bring it in there for you. Once the model fully imports, you can see it comes in in the exact orientation that you exported it out of Cura in. So now all you have to do is slice this. So click on your model, when it turns green, you come all the way up here to cut this little yellow box icon, and we're gonna click that. So then you're going to have this dialog box. The first thing you wanna do is uncheck this show preview because it will crash, and there's just something about this program that isn't that stable, and it crashes sometimes. But it does exactly what we're looking for, and to me, it's worth having a crash here and there. Now, when you look at your axes, you can actually choose where you want it to cut. Since we're going up and down, we want Z. But you can change it between Y and then you can see it's splitting it down the middle of the face and then X obviously is going to cut the face in half as you see there now the one thing here is to understand how the slicing actually works so let's go back to Z and if we drag this all the way to the end which is the top of the model so right here at the tip you can see that it's at 70 this is actually how many millimeters tall it is so all you have to do is, if you want to get a perfect split, just take that number and divide it by 2. But for our case, we're actually wanting to get it just past the center. So let's put in 40. Now you can see it gets it right past that edge, but I'm going to come a little closer to this peg. So let's try 38. And there we go. Real close to that edge, and we should be good of this peg. So the next thing you want to do is you don't want to just leave this lower part checked because it will delete the face. We want to have both pieces. So all we're going to do is just check these two things and then hit perform cut. Now all we have to do is we're going to click on our model just on one of them and export STL right over here. So we're going to export this one and call this our top. Then we're going to click on this one over here and export the STL and call it our bottom. And then once we have that, all we have to do is get ready for the body. So we want to delete these now, and you can come all the way up here to the top left and hit delete all. Then we're going to add in another model. And the one thing I will say, for these bigger models that have a lot of polys, it does take a minute or so to import. So just be patient. So now we have our torso imported. I'm going to click on the torso. Then I'm going to uncheck show preview. And for this part, I do not want to keep the lower part. I actually want the upper part. So I'm going to check that. Now I'm going to spin it around so I can get a good view of it and I want it cut off from right here. So let's bring this up to say 35 and see what that looks like. And that looks pretty good to me. That'll be a cool looking bust. So now all I'm going to do is perform cut. All right, so there we go. So now we have him essentially coming out of the ground, but when we get it all assembled, it's going to be a cool looking bust. Now the last step is I'm gonna click on this again and then and now the last step, I'm going to click on this until it turns green and then click export STL. And then I'm going to save this out. So now we're going to jump back into Cura and I'm going to open up the files and bring them in. So then you just bring in your files and depending on how they are, you may need to rotate them again to make them sit flat on the bed. And then once you have all of that set, then you can just slice your model and hit print. So let's go ahead and hit print on this and let's see what the results are. Okay, so now we have everything printed and it honestly, uh, it turned out awesome. So here, let's check out this face. Like the mouth, the teeth, everything. That was just the most perfect angle to print this at because everything looks great and it's flat. And here's this. This turned out good. Not too much detail here, but it printed up. No supports. Now, I do have a slight edge on this, and I, I took some of my sanding sticks and just went ahead and helped with the edge a little bit, and I'll probably do a little more after I glue it. 
And this comes right back into the beginning of the video when I said there are some drawbacks to doing it in this method. You'll have a seam and it is going to take some plastic putty or some filler putty and a lot of sanding and work. Now for a smooth surface like this, if I did enough work on this, I can make this look absolutely flawless in the final paint job. But I will say if there is like a texture of like a mesh texture or something like that, you are going to have a terrible time doing it. So if there's a lot of textures, you might not want to do this method. You might even want to do the method just to avoid all of the supports you're going to need and you're willing to sacrifice your print to just have one seam line on it. And spray paint and stuff like that, you can get the filler primer and that will help it a lot too. Now, when it comes to this, this came out just fine. I did have one mess up here and it actually came up off the build plate right here. I had a bit of an adhesion issue, but this was all because of my error. I left the door to my studio open and it has a cold draft when I do, so it was cooling a lot faster on the build plate and it peeled up. Because this is the only time I actually get adhesion issues is when I leave that dumb door open. But I figured just for this intense purposes, it's fine and I'm not going to reprint it just because of that. And when it sets flat, it still looks pretty good. So, so now just to show you here, I'm going to go ahead and glue this up. I'm not going to do any filler primer because I'll probably fix this up later. But if you're curious on how to do that, I've actually got a video on how I process my prints and I'll go ahead and put a link to it right here for you. All I'm going to use today is just some super glue gel and put some on it right here. And if you notice, I'm not coming near the edges because when it squeezes out, I don't want some super glue squeezing out the sides because that's already a lot already. And first what I do is I kind of swirl it around a little bit. And now I'm just going to line it up as best as I physically can and hold this together give some pressure to it and now i wait for about a minute holding pressure and then it will be good to handle all right so now i have the head and you can see that seam like i said that is a negative what i can do is i can actually first just take my sanding sticks and kind of clean this off and try to make it as flat as i can And already just that little bit, you can see how it cleans it up. And I would take some putty across this and then sand it down again. But since this was really about just printing support free, I'm not gonna focus too much on the actual cleanup of this. Then all I gotta do is put this on there and we've got ourselves a bust. We've got an awesome looking bust. So there are a little bit of gaps here. I'm not going to glue this right now because I would use some plastic putty to fill in these cracks and glue that together. And you can see that in that post-processing video that I showed up top just a few minutes ago. And that is how you can slice up your model to not have supports. So I will say this method doesn't work for every single model, but it could work for a lot of different types of models. But you always have that one thing of you've got that bad seam. You can fix it, but it's all up to the amount of work you're willing to put into it. And also, depending on those textures, you might not be able to make it look right. That's why I'm saying not every model is meant for this method. But if you can find models that actually have some smooth edges, you are going to be in good shape and you can easily cut those things up and make them look awesome. If you like what you've seen today, hit the subscribe button and you can see all of the videos that I put out about tips, tricks, and even painting 3D prints. If you're interested in more software related tutorials, I did a Cura series and I'll put it right up here for you. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.